Alright, good day guys. I'm going to try and show you a no-nonsense tutorial on how to use SimScale to quickly get from your CAD model to the pretty colors and the information you might want in terms of the force of lift and drag, etc. So let's get into it. Alright, let's jump over to SimScale right here. Click on Start Simulating Now. Now we're going to create a new project. So that's up in the top right, New Project. Uh, you can give it whatever title you want. This doesn't matter all that much. Once you've created a new project from the dashboard, the first thing it'll ask for is the geometry. Uh, I'm assuming that from your 3D modeling software, you know how to export your geometry as a .step file. It's the most common format for computer-aided designs, and it is what SolidWorks wants. So go to import from your computer. Uh, throw the file into there and press import. That'll take a second to upload. Now, unfortunately, you can't just use the model as it is. You do need to do a little bit of extra work. So once the model's in there, you want to then edit it in CAD mode. Uh, okay, so press on that. And the important things we need to do here is we need to set up the volume of air that is around the model and then we have to cut the the, the volume that the um that the aircraft is taking up out of the air um, that we're going to make now so first thing press up in the top left flow volume external and that'll add a bounding box around the thing uh, you can adjust here with the numbers how big that box is um, obviously It'll run faster if there's less air that it has to think about as it runs the computations. Uh, but you'll also maybe lose a little bit of accuracy. Uh, I'm not really sure. But anyway, that's that. Uh, press apply. This will create your box. Now up in the about the middle of the toolbar, you want to use a Boolean operation to cut the airplane out of the air. And obviously you're choosing subtract from the drop down Boolean options there. The target body is your cube of air and the tool body is the aircraft which it's a bit difficult to click through things to select it so just use this list on the right um, and choose your aircraft there it'll go red to show that it's the it's the thing that we're removing um, you can discard the tool in other words the the model is going to vanish from the file uh, uh, you should do that as well and press apply and that'll be all we need to do in the CAD workspace and we can go back to the simulation. To get back to where we were, we just need to click save as copy up in the top right. We press that, it'll bring us back to our simulation. And we have now two regions. We've got the aircraft that we originally imported and we have this new copy, which is just the air around the aircraft. Go ahead and delete the aircraft because otherwise SimScale will um, complain at you if you don't do that. So now select your box of air minus airplane and choose create simulation. For simple aerodynamics, you just want to use incompressible. So create simulation down the bottom right. Here we go. All of this, that's fine. Just press save. Uh, now what we need to do is tell, tell the simulation what material all of this is made out of. And it's made out of air, so just go to materials, press the little plus symbol, choose air, and apply. So now this box is a box of air. Press save. Now we're going to set up some boundary conditions. And what this is, is uh, which, what each of these faces of the box do. So we want to blow air in from the front of the aircraft, obviously. And we want to have a way for that to escape. Uh, and then everything else, um, well, I'll show you as we get there. So create a vo velocity inlet to blow air into the cube of air. Choose your front side face. And then uh, you want to choose a value of the air velocity. Also very important here to pay attention to which direction the air is going. So if I look down here at the bottom right, there's a little view cube. I can see that the Z arrow is pointing at the nose of my aircraft, which means that my air airspeed, my air velocity, um, 
needs to be positive z so i'm going to go to z here give it a positive figure let's say 30 meters a second and that will do there so we have our velocity the fluid is being pushed with that velocity from the front now we need to let the pressure out at the back so create a pressure outlet boundary condition put that at the opposite face and we want to send that down to zero pascals so we'll just gauge pressure zero press save and then all these other the other faces of the box the other four faces we're going to make those slip walls so press add choose wall uh, highlight all four of them and then up here under boundary condition wall set velocity to slip so um, i think how that should work is it essentially just lets the air slide kind of frictionlessly from the front to the back without interfering too much so save on that now we're almost done the last thing we want to actually get valuable graphs and uh and numbers uh we will need to tell it which surfaces of this um geometry is the bounding box and which surfaces have the forces acting on them that we're interested in so because this is a an aircraft and it's floating in in the air it's completely you know suspended in fluid uh we're interested in all of the surfaces so go to results control expand that out and then under forces and moments press a little plus here and add forces and moments now this part is the sort of tricky part because we need to select all of the faces belonging to our aircraft uh, and not these boundary faces so what I do here to select the faces is click on the entire model there on the top right and then you can just unselect out of there uh, the six faces of the cube by re-clicking those individually um, and now you see there's a white outline around the, the aircraft and there's black outlines around the cube that means you've done that all right so press uh, also, if you do know the center of rotation of your aircraft, if it's different from where they, the thing has automatically put it, uh, it would help you to, to set that now. Anyways, we'll just leave that as it is. We press save. And we are finally ready to go. So down in simulation runs, we'll start the simulation. Uh, you can give it a name if you like. And this will take a very long time. So we'll come back and we'll start, uh, restart recording when it's done. Okay, it is now three months later and the calculations are complete. Um, no, it actually took 17 minutes, not too bad. Um, once that's done, you press uh, post process results. Okay, and here we are finally in the part where we get to see the pretty colors. So um, by default, you get a, a cross section, top down cross section plane. Um, I'll show you how I like to set this up. First thing you probably want to do is hide everything that isn't your vehicle. So just click on each of the faces once and press hide selection. And that gets you down to just your vehicle. And uh, even though this so Cross section planes might be useful for some people. I prefer to turn that one off. And for part color, I like to have um, a solid color which shows the pressure. Um, and so this will show you where the pressure is at. Uh, down the bottom here, you can adjust your color scale. So I like to have a continuous scale. Uh, use continuous scale and then also to bring in the upper and lower bounds so you get a bit more of a gradient in the areas where you're interested in um, so you can see the effect of bringing that in now and this will help this helps you to pronounce uh, where the effects are sort of taking place so as you can see in this particular aircraft we have the very very low pressure zones here just before the the winglets or the vertical stabilizer we have a very very high pressure right on the tip of the nose and on the motor mounts um, 
and of course across the entire leading edge is pretty high pressure and underneath you can see it's generally higher pressure than on top where it's a nice blue and green underneath is sort of a orangey color so that shows the the kind of pressure differential which leads to a lifting force speaking of lifting force you probably want to know exactly how much force your aircraft is going to be lifting by uh, for a given um, velocity so that's where we go to the force plot so down the bottom left here click on forces um, and moments plot and it comes up with a very confusing graph basically what we're interested in because if you remember our model had the the air was moving in the positive z direction the upwards is in the direction that we want to get lift was in the y positive y direction and on this particular graph this black line is pressure force y so we can see here that we are getting and and the numbers start out crazy that's just because of how the computation uh, works and eventually they should converge to a nice stable value so really you're only interested in the figures that appear kind of at the most right side of this graph they're going to be the most accurate so what i'm seeing here is we get 36.9 newtons of force in the upwards direction so that's 36.9 newtons of lift on this uh, model aircraft we go back to our run just click on that cog uh sorry click on this post process results to get back to where we were or um, solution fields from underneath run one which is our first run of the simulation to make some more of those sort of cool graphics you usually see particle trace up here in the top left is a good one to to go for and then this little circle button here is how you reposition the start of the particle trace uh, it has to be positioned on your inlet wall so the front or back face of the your geometry you had so i'm going to have to invert visibility to bring that back and then we'll click this here in the middle somewhere now you can see it creates that grid of purple dots those are the the starting points of the particle trace and if we invert visibility again you'll see that they flow through the streamlines from from that point where the velocity is first injected and they go around the, the model there yeah there we have it so that is how you quickly get from a plain model to the fancy colors and streamlines and figures such as your forces uh, of your net pressure force of lift and so on i hope that was helpful uh, if you found anything wrong with this please let me know if you're an expert at simscale i'm just trying to help you get uh, up and started uh, quickly with no nonsense see ya